it's time to learn how to animate in Photoshop. Let's get straight to it. Tip tot. Hello everybody and welcome back to Tip Tart and welcome back to Animation in Photoshop. Last time around, uh, this is episode four, we did this little guy. He's doing a little spooky smile. He's a he's a brave boy. Um, and this is what we've got so far. Slammer foot, turn around. Slammer foot, turn around. There needs to be the other foot. Little cape, rippling in the wind, whoom, gets pulled out the way, does a little evil boy smile. Turns out you can now transform multiple frames at once. So what I'm going to do is grab all of my frames in this selection here. Hit Control T, choose Edit, Transform, and flip horizontal, and then Enter. And would you know it, bam, we've now got the other foot coming down. So let's look at that again uh, with the right foot. This isn't going as fast as going at 12 instead of 24 because obviously it's processing a lot of frames. So it's actually half speed. Bam, that looks pretty good. Happy with this so far. All right, nice one. Let's jump right into the next frame then. Excuse me. Up next, what we got? Let's see. Let's um, reposition our timeline here. Let's turn on uh, our storyboard layer. And you can see, oh, the tough one, the hand rising out of nothingness and holding a and brandishing a pencil. Took me forever to get this hand looking even vaguely correct. So I'm going to relish that fact by drawing it again, uh, just to get warmed up and to make sure that we've got a frame that we need on the correct layer. So let's give ourselves a two frame long frame here. Let's make him green. So it's the same as all the other stuff. And while I'm drawing this, I'll just tell you a little about what's going to happen here. So this is obviously a really complex frame, but there's not actually a lot of um, points where the entire hand is in view because we want it to whip up quite quickly. The only time we'll be drawing a full hand is this here, which I've already given to you as like a, a demo frame. So that you guys don't have to struggle for as long as I did drawing a bloody hand. The rest of them aren't probably going to look like hands. And also in the final animation, yes, it'll have a border, obviously, um, as you saw in, on the, in the intro, what that's going to look like. Um, yes, it'll have a border, but it's not going to be particularly distinguishable as a hand. So we can probably get away with the fact that I can't draw hands. Uh even though I added this shot specifically to force myself to try and draw some hands, which is all good fun and games. So just doing our little warm up here, making sure that we're ready to go and happy to draw. He's holding his little pencily boy firmly in his grasp. Like so and like so. Awesome. So we have this frame. We, of course, need our previous frame, which we will just add in. Oops, excuse me, that put it in the wrong place. We'll just fix that. Pop him over there, make him green. Uh, and we'll just trace this one. So as you can see, this doesn't even really look like a hand or an arm or anything, but it does have the vague shapes in the roughly right place, which for me is good enough because I'm an idiot who can't draw hands, as I previously stated. So we have our two key frames. Let's pop them right next to each other. This is probably going to be quite short. Uh, it's probably not going to be as long as we've got here. So what I want this to be is essentially a hand that's not in the frame. It's going to sort of bring itself up and then just hold itself there. So if I can get this on camera, you can kind of see it's going to go like boom, bam, and then hold itself. Yeah, like boom, bam, like that. So we probably need a frame before this which is nice because all it means I've got to do is draw a vaguely hand-shaped lump, which is basically that, let's be honest. Uh, maybe we can draw like a fold if it, if it really helps. Then we can have it, the next frame is probably going to be the hardest one because it's the perspective that's going to change. So let's give ourselves another two frames here. Let's make that green. Let's turn on onion skin and let's hide our storyboard because it's going to get distracting otherwise. So for this one, it's as if the hand, if, if like this was the finishing position, it's going to have to just be whoop, like that, uh, which I'm not super confident that I can draw. So please bear with me if this is shit. <laughs> uh, we're just going to give it a go. Um, 
let's start off by seeing which stuff is going to be in the same position. This thumb is going to be pretty much the same, right? Uh, in fact, what I will do is I'll make this blue just so I can easily see what I'm drawing. It's going to be in the pretty much same position, but it's going to be kind of more, more downwards. And that's going to be kind of the same. That's going to be like thicker. And then this is going to be maybe like more pointed down. Or is it m more smooshed? I don't know. It doesn't look like a hand anyway. I don't think it matters. Let's have this guy kind of more down like this. Again, this is only going to be on frame for, for two frames. So as long as it looks vaguely correct. And it's kind of got an overshoot as well. So I want it to come like up. This is the up frame and then it's going to settle back down here. So these are going to kind of be more higher up than the other stuff, if that makes sense. So the pencil is going to be kind of pointing upwards like this. But the thumb is twisted that way. So the thumb makes sense to stay where it is. It's just the rest of the stuff that needs to change. This little finger is going to be kind of splooping, splooping over here like that. This palm is going to be like boom. No, it's not. It's going to be like boom. And that's going to be like that. And that's going to be like that. And this definitely needs a fingernail. And that definitely needs like to be coming out this way a bit more. Boom. And that can go like that. Boom, 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 boom. Let's see what that looks like. Let's give this a bit of breathing room there. Let's turn off onion skin. Let's make this guy green. And let's have a look. Not too bad, but you can see what I mean. Like, as long as you get the last settling frame correct, it's going to look all right, which, and I'll settle, definitely settle for all right. Great. It definitely needs some more at the end there, though. And I don't know if that is going to be like this. Um, let's do a thing. Let's take this. Let's give ourselves two frames and still make this our final frame because we're happiest with that. And let's just do one that we can get it as close as possible to the original. We'll make it blue whilst we're drawing it. Uh, and then we will fix that back to green. So again, make it just a little bit thicker on the thumb. Make it just a little bit different. And this is essentially going to be the settling frame as it settles and snaps into place. And we want it to be like the, yeah, the darker of the two greens, which is the next frame. So again, we'll be kind of copying it, but just bringing all of this motion to kind of just boom, into place. Nice. And nice. Have that settle there. This this would be this way. Would that be that way? Sure, why not? <laughs> That'd be that way. Uh, a bit of a fingernail there. As I said before, please bear with me. Hands are not my strong suit, but I kind of like how weirdly detailed this is compared to everything else. Like a Ren and Stimpy cartoon, you know, when they like zoom in on like a stupidly detailed face, even though the rest of it has been really simply animated. Uh, for more modern audiences, like a uh, SpongeBob SquarePants does the same thing. Squidward, like mm, Squidward, that guy. Um, uh, the thumb's a bit fatter still, isn't it? Bam, on this one, nice, nice. Bah. Nice. And the pencil can be pretty much there. Pink. Like so. Not bad. All right. Let's make him green. See what we got. Uh, turn off on your skin. Oh. 
nice. I think it needs one more settling frame, perhaps after this one, that holds on for a bit. So we'll do a new frame here, make him green, and we'll make him four, four frames long. And we will add our onion skin, and we'll just see if we can't fix any of the issues we're not happy with on this one. For example, make sure that all of our little folds of skin and stuff are there if we want them to be. Make sure they're like, boop, boop. Because essentially these lines are gonna become our black lines later on that we saw in the original full animation at the beginning of each of these episodes. So they will exist. It's not just gonna be shapes like it was in the uh, plants video that I uploaded. So we need to make sure that we're at least somewhat happy with how these lines are represented on the page. Which I think I am. I think that that fingernail needs to change a little bit. And this rounded segment here, this bit needs to go, like what is that? What's going on here? It's kind of just, boom, 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 and boom, that looks good. I think we might need a little bit of a crease there. And then that rounded bit on the hand. And the pen, which looks good. Oops, nearly forgot these two bits. And then the thumb. Nice. Okay, that looks pretty good. Somewhat happy with that. Yeah, then it hangs on there a bit, that's better. And that little bit of overshoot, that little bit of bam, bam, looks really good. Awesome. Let's shrink this storyboard boy down, and then we've got the reveal, which is probably going to be the funnest bit to do. Because there's quite a lot going on here. Now, obviously, this shot, although complicated, all the movement is kind of on one bit because there's nothing over flapping or anything. Like here, we had the overlap and the, the secondary animation of the hair. You know, uh, this was simple, the cloth, but the foot, we had the um, puffs of dust and stuff as well. This one's going to be nice and complicated uh, to do if we turn on the storyboard here. This is where our character is going to be. So what's going to be animated in this segment? Let's just take a, a quick second to think about that. Um, oops, I accidentally just made a massive frame there. What I would like to do is add a two. Nice. So what's going to be animated on this one? Definitely the cape's going to be flapping about, so we'll need some wave animations there, yeah? Definitely his hair's still going to be kind of going up and down. Um, he may or may not be blinking. That might be fun. I'd like this arm to, like, come in and, and gather up the book a little bit more to, like, bring attention to the fact that he's holding a bit of paper. Uh, and maybe the head will tilt, but I'm not sure about that. I kind of want him to just be like, you know? Uh, then of course it is all gonna slowly like it's gonna like snap zoom out as the, as all this happens. I'm not sure whether I want to redraw that because I've got the scale correct here. Boom! I'm happy with that kind of scale movement, Boom. like that. But I don't know if I want the line thickness to remain constant, so it doesn't look like the camera's moving. It looks like he's actually being drawn smoother. For example, like if I just scaled him down, any lines that were this thick would then become like that thick, yeah? If we just scaled him down. Whereas if we redraw him, like this circle would be just as thick as this circle when he's smaller, which I think I prefer. So let's do that, I believe. Let's get rid of this frame. It's rubbish. It's full of scribbles. On the bottom here, I'm going to draw the cape first because that's going to be the like the, the lowest bit of movement to him anything that's not going to move um i'm just going to stick that on its own layer i'm going to stick the arm on its own layer and the hair on its own layer and the eyes on their own layer so i'm going to need quite a few layers here right so i've decided what i'm going to do i'm going to draw everything at the same size and scale it down um, to do the camera zoom out for the roughs here. And then when it comes to doing the actual lines later on, I will uh, draw them with the same thickness pen. That means I can worry about the animation first and then like the camera movements later on and try and keep everything as separate as possible.
So on this first layer, um, I'm going to draw the uh, static stuff. I keep opening up with my fingers on the other screen, uh, the, the, the bits here, and it's very annoying. Let's give ourselves a two framer. Let's make him uh, green, that'll do. And let's zoom in and everything that isn't going to move. So I'm pretty sure his head isn't going to move. Um, no, his head's not going to move at all. I'm going to use a bit of a smaller brush for this one. Again, like I said, it doesn't matter. I'll, I'll pick a size. I'll stick with it for the proper things. Um, so no, his head's not going to move. His hair will, but his head won't. So that's going to be one layer. His glasses won't move. His eyes might blink, so I'll leave those off for now. His hair's definitely going to move. This part of his cape won't move. So we'll draw that in. Um, I kind of like the straight lines here that contrast with like the wavy lines on the rest of the cape that is moving. This part of his arm and the paper will move, so we'll do that on a different layer. This arm will stay stock still, because it'll be kind of funny. He's like brandishing his pencil and then he's just not doing any drawing. How as often as that happened to all of us, eh? Um, so that's going to be all on the same layer. Hello, dog, sniffing at my feet. You're a good girl. Um, he's grasping his pencil, but easier to draw this hand <laughs> than the last one was. Keep that pencil nice and simple because it's way too like far away for it to need any kind of detail. This part of his body will not move. Like so. Maybe I was thinking that I'd want um, his shorts to wiggle in the wind as well, but I don't think you'd, you'd see it with all the movement from the cape going on. So I'm not sure there's much point. Like with these things, surely they'd be blowing in the wind, right? But like, you're not going to look at that. So save me some time. Again, just using this as a little bit of a warm up as I come back to it after a break. It's good to warm up. People neglect it. Uh, and then you get old creaky hands like mine. And they start to hurt. So his legs ain't going to move either because he's a lazy boy. Something just disconnected from my PC. I've been having so many recording issues uh, with this series. I almost gave up twice because uh, I was so stressed out from everything, just breaking constantly. Let's color in his shorts because why the hell not? So all of this stuff is static, which is good because the less we have to animate, the quicker we hit the deadline. Um, everything else, however, I believe will be moving. So let's stick that on its own dang layer. First thing, though, we need to finish the actual drawing because this paper will be moving. And I don't quite know how I want it to move yet. So I'll just draw what I believe to be behind him just for completion's sake. No point drawing the rest of the arm, obviously, because that bit's going to be moving. So, good, good, good. Aww. Says the dog. Uh, apologies, I did explain earlier in the series, but she's new and she's freaking out because she's not not sure what's going on with all this little... Should we say hello? Should we say hello, Toffola? Should we say hello to the people? Hey, It's the tip tutters. There she is. This is Toff. It rhymes with tough. She's a chihuahua cross mini pincher. She doesn't like it when I record, do you? Silly animal. <sighs> um, sorry, I got distracted then. Now I've lost my pen. I found it. The cape is on a separate layer. So two frames, plonk them up there. Position me in place. Let's make the cape blue because it's going to be blue in the final animation. Now what we will do for this one 
we've got loads of extra space so we can just do like the the line moving down trick that i taught you about before but for this first reference frame we will just draw the bits we need and nothing else again this arm is going to move however so i will just draw how i believe it connects up just for completion's sake and um, we'll just have it at the bottom here. Now I could do something, you know, like you've seen where the, the cape actually has folds in it. Like this, you know, like so it's folding over itself. But I think it's just a little too complex for this like visual style, essentially. We're not going for realism, we're going for like an, an approximation of. So that is the cape movement. Let's draw the uh, the arm on another layer. So one thing I found out is that you can move, uh, if you're moving from one layer to another, you can move to like the playhead quite easily. It will kind of snap to it. Um, but otherwise you can still drag it to any position that you want. Let's make the arm red. Let's trace what we've already got. There we go. Sorry, I forgot I was doing a show then and just wasn't talking at all. <laughs> uh, and the last layer that we're gonna need is for his hair. So let's do another two. Position the playhead, drag it up. Let's make the hair blue as well um, because it's blue in the animation, I believe. Oh, one other layer I forgot is the eye boils. I'm gonna need a couple of eye boils. So we'll stick that on their own layer, even though that's probably overkill, uh, but we'll need an extra one. So for that, we'll just need a folder, new folder, uh, and drag out that layer. Let's make the eyeballs red, probably the easiest to see. And let's pop them there. Okay, that is all the setup for our final frame done. I think that'll do for this episode, and we will get cracking with the rest of this animation on the next one. Then what I'll probably do is I won't do any of the coloring or the fine lining in normal speed. I might make a separate video that's just like a time lapse of it um, where I speak over some of the things that I've learned during this series and some of the tips and things to help you guys with it. But I don't think that needs a whole video of you just watching me carefully trace stuff for fucking six hours, you know. Um, so that'll do. Thank you very much for watching. Make sure to like, comment, subscribe, all the other crap that YouTube makes me say. And I'll see you next time for potentially the final episode of Animation in Photoshop on TipTap. I'd like to take a moment to thank my level two members of the channel. Thank you so much for supporting me and what I do here at TipTap. Huge thank yous to Unknown Ghosts, WN62 and an anonymous level two member. You guys are awesome. If you'd like to get a shout out at the end of each tutorial video, consider hitting that join button below and becoming part of the TipTap zone. Thank you very much, everyone. I'll see you later. <laughs>